Okay. Welcome, everybody. This is number four of the series of Google Business. Uh, and today it was all about reviews, the dreaded reviews. So I'm going to try to burn through this. Uh, my, my dry run earlier was about 36 minutes. I'm going to try to get it down a little bit less than that. Uh, for those of you who I have not had the pleasure of meeting yet or don't know who I am, I've been a computer nerd for 40 years this year. That's kind of a celebration for me. Uh, and I've been helping real estate agents in their technology and marketing for the last 15 years. Uh, and I started my own, I left my corporate job, started my own marketing agency just a couple months ago. And uh, that's been quite a, quite a, quite a ride, let me tell you. Uh, and then I'm also part of the KFA marketing club, uh, team and what our goal at KFA, if you don't, if you haven't heard of us, our goal is just to bring the community together through classes, masterminds, events, things like this right here. Uh, think of it as a big, happy family in real estate and the financial world. And we kind of stick together, help each other out a lot. And that's kind of what these classes are all about. So speaking of, we have an event coming up on September 15th. Uh, what's cool about this particular one is there's going to be a speaker on stage that looks a lot like me, sounds a lot like me, and he's going to be putting out his new tech software, AI technology marketing software directed specifically towards real estate agents. And not only that, but we were we, we added another speaker who's he's going to be demoing his AI software too. So not just one uh, groundbreaking technology is announced. We're going to see two of them at this demo. And, uh, Man, I can't wait to see what what the other speakers brought. It's it's absolutely mind blowing, um, and it's the this session is all about AI. So this one right here today, this is number three, number four out of uh, I got eleven on there, uh, and all about reviews, strategies to get more reviews, missing reviews, and if you missed any of the first three, they're sitting over on my YouTube channel. Remember the goals, all of this stuff that we're doing is just to improve your ranking and more importantly, get conversions and turning the clicks into customers. That's really the goal of all of this. Cause if we can't get more opportunities at the plate, then we're doing all this for nothing. Being found on search and ranking on search is only the first part. You have to be able to go in and get conversions from it. Uh, and again, it's over on my YouTube channel. If you missed any of it previously, you can go over there and check them out. If you're already in the process of putting some of this stuff in place and you want to see how you're doing, or maybe you just want a quick little free 30 minute strategy session to see like, Hey, am I doing it right? Can I, can I do things better? Or you need, uh, of some motivation for your marketing, uh, could just go ahead, head over to kfaclub.com forward slash marketing. You'll see my booking calendar right there. I booked out the first part of almost every single day, every week, uh, as to, to do these digital audits. Uh, I did several of them this week too. And uh, a, a couple of interesting things popped up in those Google audits. They always pop up in those Google audits. It's kind of fun. Uh, so this particular class all got about reviews. And what we're going to talk about today is mostly the Google reviews versus other review sites and why Google is like super important and, and the best place to gather those reviews. And also who to ask for those reviews, because that's also a challenge. People think there's only one group of people you can ask for a review, and I disagree. Uh, replying to reviews, we're talking about handling negative reviews, turning the negative reviews into a positive, why clients don't often leave a review. There's several reasons. Uh, and then we're going to talk about strategies to get more reviews. And then something that is incredibly frustrating for me, it's missing reviews. And I'm seeing a lot more of it lately. Google's algorithm has kind of stepped up. We're going to talk about that. And in fact, I put a Google review guide together that I'm going to share with you at the end of the class. If you want to, if you stick around, I'll give you the link to download it. Now, I don't have to tell you guys about the importance of reviews. I really don't. Uh, I think every single person on here knows that they need more reviews, that they should be asking for more reviews. In fact, um, you know, when I was doing research for this class, I saw some statistics on reviews that were absolutely mind blowing to me. Uh, and this is just one of them, you know, 93% of users made a decision before buying, you know, based on an online review. And I look at my own consumer behavior you know, the, the, the way that I operate as a consumer. And I look at reviews myself before I buy a product or service. I had a plumbing emergency. Some of you may have heard the story at a plumbing emergency. A couple of years ago, I asked for some, um, for some plumbers 
on social media, I got three names. I went in and Googled all three of those. That was the first thing I did. Google all three of those names. Uh, I found two of them on Google. Only one of them had a review. Uh, and I hired the one that I found on Google. So I practice what I preach in, in the sense of I look at reviews very, very diligently. And I think I'm not alone. I think a lot of consumers do the same thing. Now, where to gather reviews. What I will tell you is if you want to rank on Google, Google is the place that we've got to gather the reviews. Now, there's all kinds of places to gather reviews for real estate agents. Uh, I, I put a bunch of them up here on the screen. Uh, and the number one thing that I'll tell you is can reviews be found? Can your reviews be found? No matter what platform they're on, can they be found? I know somebody who is using a review platform. Uh, they got a ton of reviews on there. I couldn't find the reviews anywhere. And when I Google searched this person, he's like, I've got like 75 reviews on this platform. I couldn't find them. I finally found them. They were on page two of Google. And I don't know if you know the, the joke with page two of Google is that's where you hide dead bodies is on page two of Google. Nobody goes to page two. They go to page one. And on page one is your Google business profile. So I will say without a doubt, Google is the best place to gather reviews. Uh, and so the white spark that I've been referencing through all these classes, this is kind of their overall ranking, local pack ranking factors for reviews. And I pulled out all of the places where reviews land in the ranking factors. And you can see most of them are pretty high, six, eight, 13, and 20, you know, so four of them in the top 20, just for online ranking factors, which is, that's pretty high. And you can see the number right there at the top number six, you know, so number six would be high numerical Google rankings. And that's like your average of your, of your Google rankings. We're going to talk about averages here in a minute too, but this was the one right here that really stuck out in my head. This is the conversion factors. So when people find you and they go to your Google profile, these are the things that they're looking at. They're looking at reviews. They're looking at the positive sentiment in the review text, you know, from your clients, from your vendors, from your partners, from the people leaving you reviews. They're looking at the, the presence of responses in most of your reviews. That's, we're going to talk about responding to reviews in this, in this class today too. But these are all super, super important conversion factors. And this is why reviews are the most important part of any strategy going forward, getting more reviews. Now, who is reading your reviews? I broke it down. There's a couple of different people that are reading your reviews. Number one, if they're finding you organically, like they're searching for a real estate agent near me, best real estate agent in Vancouver, Washington, et cetera, et cetera. They're finding your, your, uh, your Google business. They're reading, those people are reading your reviews. Also the people who are in their consideration phase. Maybe they narrowed it down. Maybe they narrowed their search down to four or five people or maybe one or two people uh, and they're reading the reviews and the reviews are going to decide who they're going to use. Okay, so that consideration phase, is, that's usually a pretty important place where reviews are getting read. Uh, but I think one source that often gets uh, under underestimated is the referral source. And I'm not just talking about people who are referring you, like your friends and family referring you as an agent. I'm talking about referral agents across the country as well. Okay. So when somebody, ha when you have a referral and somebody's moving to Boise, Idaho, and you need an agent in Boise, Idaho, and you're doing all this research, you're reading those reviews and you're reading the responses. And if there's other agents who've said, you know, Larry's an amazing agent out in Boise, Idaho, and I sent him my clients who've relocated and you're getting those reviews on there from other agents across the country, that's going to speak volumes for who you are. And, and, and how you serve your clients. So, and then of course, anybody who refers you business, those people that when, when they say, when you ref, you're referred out, they're going to Google search you. That person who's, you know, referred you is they're going to Google search you. They're going to go look at your reviews uh, and just to justify. And so what that does is it puts them back in that consideration phase. They find you go into consideration phase and then ultimately decide to hire you. Okay. So that's kind of who's reading your reviews. Now, who should you be asking for the reviews? Whom? Okay, we're correct grammar. Uh, clients, you know, your past clients, your current clients, that's absolutely who you should be asking for reviews from first. 
Referral agents are another big one. And these could be referral partners. If you've if you've referred business back and forth to each other in, in the past, absolutely go in, ask them for a review. And you can trade reviews with those people as well. Same with the partners. And when I say partners, I'm talking about like uh, your lenders, your cleaners, your photographers, your stagers, you know, and you can go trade reviews with those people as well. In fact, that's a really good strategy because you're helping each other out. And then the last one is anybody that you've given advice to, like, let's say your neighbor next door said, Hey, we're thinking about selling our house, you know, and, and doing X, Y, Z, you know, and, and you either talked them into it or talked them out of it, but they eventually didn't use you. You can still ask them for a review if you've given them advice. And I know somebody else who does this when they, when they make an offer on a house that was a FISBO, they ask the, the FISBO sellers for a review and they use those reviews to go after other FISBO sellers when when they're when they're trying to get that that listing under contract with the for sale by owner. So anybody that you give an advice to, that's a that's a really good one too. Now replying to reviews, uh, and I put this little screenshot down here at the bottom: the presence of owner re responses to most reviews, and that's the conversion factor right there. Not only do people read reviews they read responses to your reviews, positive and negative. They they read the responses when somebody's in the consideration phase. But there's a lot of other reasons why. Number one, it's the nice thing to do. You know, somebody takes the time to leave you a review. It's kind of nice to go in and acknowledge it. it and it shows that you're paying attention. It shows Google that you're paying attention too because they love it more than anything. They look at the presence of responses to reviews as one of those ranking factors. Uh, and number three, it builds trust. Not only does it build trust with the person who left you a review, it builds trust from anybody and who's looking at the consideration phase. But more importantly, the, when you respond to a review, it's giving you the opportunity to tell the rest of the story. So if you if you have clients who left you a review, maybe they just left you a five star and said, you know, they were great. That was it. And they didn't tell any part of the story. You can go in and say like, you know, hey, you know, Bob and Carol, I'm so happy that, you know, I was able to get your home under contract in four days and help you facilitate your move to Boise, Idaho and find your referral agent out there. It was great to meet you guys. I wish you all the best on your adventure. It gives you the opportunity to tell the rest of the story. Okay. So if they didn't leave something very descriptive, it allows you to go in and add something a little bit more descriptive. So tell the rest of the story, which sometimes people don't know what to say. Uh, how how soon should you reply? I would say like as soon as you get the review, just make a habit of going in there and hitting the reply button. If you can't think of something to say, uh, you know, maybe wait a day or two and compose something. But sometimes just the, the best re reply is just something super off the cuff where and you're going to get a notification. You're going to get an email saying, hey, great job. You just got a new review from so and so. Uh, you're also if you're if you have the Google app on your mobile and you're logged in, you're going to see these uh, pop-ups, these notifications pop up. Hey, you just got a new five-star review from so-and-so. And if you tap on, it's going to take you right to that review where you can instantly reply to it. But you have to have the Google app on your phone. You have to be logged in with the account that manages your Google in order to get those reviews. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Number one, it gives you the, the notification that somebody left you a review, which is Sometimes getting reviews from clients, super, super tough. All right, negative reviews. Let's talk about negative reviews. I personally, I like negative reviews. Number one, if I go to somebody's profile, if I'm considering hiring somebody and I notice they have like a 4.7 or 4.8, I'm like, hmm, what did the negative review say? And I think I'm not alone in that. I think a lot of people go to write to the negative reviews to kind of like, Okay, what happened here? Is it just a is it a crazy Karen who came in? I've seen somebody, it was a listing agent. They got a negative review from a buyer who didn't get their offer accepted. And they came in and left the listing agent a negative review and said, you know, we came in with the best offer and this this agent, you know, it didn't take our offer and blah 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 and this agent went in and replied to that review and said, you know, like there's a, and basically took them to school. There's a lot of factors that go into making an offer. And ultimately it's not my decision as to which offer to accept. 
It's my client's decision. So I'm acting on the best interest of my clients. And here's what ended up happening. They took them to school so hard, they went in and removed the review. So, uh, and removing reviews, re removing negative reviews can be very, very, very difficult. I will tell you without a doubt. In fact, I have a probably a 1%, 1% um, rate of doing it. I've seen it happen in 1% of the times where you submit a report or review and it actually gets removed. Uh, it usually that has to violate some kind of bullying or terms of service or conflict of interest or, and, but here's one thing that I've tried is if you have multiple accounts or you have multiple people flag the re review. So if you have a team of five people, have each person on the team log into their Google account and flag the review for removal. And sometimes if the business owner flags it, it doesn't get removed. It has to be like a neutral third party or somebody who's not associated that can go in and flag the review. So I've seen instances where that actually works. But hey, negative reviews, you have to reply to the negative reviews too. Turn the negative into a positive and everything's good. Uh, now, what impacts clients not getting a review to you? Because I, I was talking to somebody the other day and she said, yeah, it's like maybe 30%, thir about 30% of the people that I ask for a review from, I actually get it. So my goal is to increase those ads. So maybe we'll, we'll step it up so that 50% of the people. So there's a couple of things we're going to talk about with strategies on how to get there. But uh, one of the, what, a lot of the hangups with not getting reviews revolve usually around like not having a Google account. That's a big one. Uh, not knowing what to say, bad timing is a huge one. You guys, like they're in the middle of a move. They're not going to leave you a review because they're going to put it off till later. Or if you're sending email and you're asking for a review over email, sometimes that email either goes to spam or gets lost in all the other junk email that we get. Uh, and the last thing was just an impersonal generic script, you know, like, thanks so much for being my client. Click here to leave me a review. And that's it. Uh, you know, if, and I, if you, if you get a little bit more personal with it, your odds are going to increase. But I broke it down into basically three different categories. So number one is the timing, the delivery, uh, timing. And second one is the delivery. And the third one is personalization. Okay. So timing, here's my advice. Pick happy milestones in, in the transaction. And when I say happy milestones, like right after the papers are signed, uh, or right after the offer is accepted, when the emotions are high and they're like super excited and they just, they can't wait. And it's those high emotions is usually when you have the best success rate of getting reviews. When you drop the keys off is another good one. Uh, if you wait until they're in the thick of moving and they're boxing everything up and the moving trucks are coming and all this other stuff's happening, they're usually going to put it off. So maybe 30 to 60 days after when they've settled down, it gives you the opportunity, one, to to check in, say like, hey, anything blow up in the house? You know, uh, did you go get your new dog yet? Have you figured out, uh, you know, did you have to go buy a lawnmower? You know, little things like that, you know, just ask them questions and like, how's it feel to be a homeowner finally? And have you made your first payment on your house yet? And how does it feel? So that gives you the opportunity to ask for that review at that point. And by the way, I never ask for a review. I ask people to share their story. I'm going to share that here in a minute too. Uh, so strategies, another strategy is how you're asking. It's the delivery mechanism. Sometimes email not always the best because we get a lot of email. Like uh, if I look at my email notifications right now, I think I have 170 unread emails in there. And I bet you 160 of them are promotional or spam. Okay. So they tend to get lost and it's easy to put off until later. You're like, you skip back past the email and you keep going and you're like, oh, I'll come back to that. But they, they forget to come back to it. So text message actually has a much higher open rate and a much higher success rate. If you're asking for a review over text and you include a link in that, in that SMS text, your odds of getting the review are substantially greater. And a lot of times you're going to get two reviews for the price of one. We call it, the, I call it the BOGO. So you get one from, uh, if, if it's a couple that bought a house, you're, you might get a review from both of them, you know, simultaneously. So a, a, hey, a BOGO review, never, ever a bad thing. Uh, now the review link, let's talk about review link because there's some warnings around this one right here. Uh, and I've seen this actually happen myself. If you're sending out a review link and you're using this method right here, where you log into your Google account, you go to the review, you know, you go to the panel, 
and you tap the read reviews and you get the review link right here. This is your review link. If you send that out to a client and they click on that link, it takes them right to your Google account and it opens up a review panel almost immediately. In fact, it does. It says it opens up a review panel. If they're not logged in, it asks them to log into their Google account. And what we're finding is if you send out that link on a regular basis, it doesn't, Google looks at it as you're priming somebody for the review. You're saying like, Hey, go leave me a review. And Google, what Google wants is they want people to come find you and leave the review. So if you're going to use, if you're using this method, just be super, super careful with it. I have a better method. Actually, I have a much better method. So here's the method that I use right here now is I go to Google maps. So maps.google.com, you search for your business in maps, and you're going to see this little share button right here. You tap that share button, and this is the link we want to send them to. Okay. Now what that does is it sends them to your maps location, which is the same thing as your Google business, it sends them to your maps location. It requires a little bit more interaction on their part. So you might have to give them some instructions. Hey, if you click this link, it'll open up in maps scroll down and look for the write a review button. Okay. So it might take a little bit more interaction, might take a little more hunting and pecking, but your odds of your review showing up are increased exponentially. And I will say exponentially, like I have a 100% success rate using this method right here. The other method I'm hearing, yeah, I've got four reviews that are still not showing up. Okay. And that's really super frustrating. We're going to cover missing reviews at the end of this too. Uh, I even created a shortcut. So if you have an iPhone, I'm an iPhone guy. Sorry. If you're an Android user, I'm sorry. Uh, but I created a shortcut on my iPhone. And what the shortcut does is if I just type three letters, I type in RVW. It's kind of like if you're typing on my way and you just type OMW and it automatically fills in on my way. Same thing. My review link is RVW and I hit enter and it automatically puts in my review link and a script at the same time. And it was super easy to set up. It's just a shortcut in, in, in your iPhone. You have to have your Google review link or your Google maps link, use your Google maps link. Uh, and it's, it was super easy to set up. So that's on my YouTube channel. If you head over there, if you scan that QR code, it'll take you right to it as well. Uh, if you're watching this on, on YouTube, I'll put the link down below so you can see it, or I'll put a link in here. It'll be around here somewhere anyway. Okay strategies. Now let's talk about strategies for getting more reviews. Uh, generic strip scripts. You, so here's my advice. We have to make it personalized. You have to say, uh, Hey, Larry, thanks so much for, you know, giving me the opportunity to be a part of your transaction. I'm so happy for you. And so, you know, Hey, now you're, now you get to go get that labradoodle you've always wanted. So if you personalize it, the more you personalize it, the more likely they are to respond. And you can also give them some tips on what to say, because that's usually one of the hangups that they have. They're like, oh, I want to leave a review, but I don't know what to say. Hey, I'm so happy that uh, we were able to get your offer accepted on the on the first house we made an offer on, which is absolutely unheard of. Uh, and we were able to, you know, negotiate a, a buy down on your interest rate to lower your monthly payment. So like if you, if you prime them with some things, when you're asking for it, if you put that, those personal details in that kind of primes them on what to say, there's some, there's some, uh, people out there that tell you like, Hey, if you can mention these things or use these keywords, I'm not big on that. I think if you, you make it as original as possible, uh, and I never ask for a review. I always say, can you go here and help tell your story or share your story with others? Make the, make sure that they know that it would it's really going to help you. Like that's the number one thing I can tell you. If you did this for me, it would mean the absolute world to me and it would help me out a lot. I'm really trying hard to, you know, to build up my my Google review count. Okay, so that I show up more on Google. It's the only form of advertising I really use. And when you say, when you mention things like that, then they're, I think they almost feel more inclined to do it. They, then they feel like they have to do it. It's a law of reciprocity, right? Uh, last thing, make sure to mention like, Hey, after you leave the review, will you let me know? I want to make sure I reply. 
uh, you can say, I have a, I might have a special gift for you or, a, you know, something for, I'll have something for you, you know, afterwards, or, a, you know, I, but more importantly, I just want to make sure that I know they left the review so that I can go to Google and make sure that the review is there. Okay. So just in case it doesn't show up and it, I think it gives them a little bit of, uh, you know, incentive number one to leave the review. They're like, Oh, she's, <laughs> they're asking me to leave the review and telling them, when, when we do it. So anyway, uh, another thing you can do too, ask them to put a photo with a review. So you can add a photo to a review on a mobile and on a computer. Now it used to be only on the computer. You can do it on a mobile now. So if you're you know, like, you do the customary photo with, you know, them after they sign the papers at the title company or in front of their house, handing them the keys or or whatever, send that photo to them and say, if you could attach this photo to your review, it would be amazing. The great thing about this is when they add the photo to the review, it actually shows up on your Google as a photo. You don't have to upload the photo. It actually shows up and the review gets ranked higher and higher and higher. Uh, so when if, if you have 50 reviews and somebody clicks on your reviews, the ones with the photos tend to float up towards the top. Uh, so, and Google likes them. They love the photos. And here's my cheat code. It's a personalized video message. The, if you record a message saying like, hey, it was a great to be a part of this transaction and I love you guys so much. I need a, I need a big favor from you. And you know, you post that kind of stuff in there and then send them the review link along with it they almost can't not leave you a review at that point. You know, they, if you put a personalized video just made for them, come on. Like if a, if a, you know, a business recorded a video and said like, Hey, Larry, thanks so much for buying your Subaru with Dick Hanna. Hey, we need a huge favor. I'm probably going to be more inclined to leave that review just because of that video. I'm going to be a hundred percent honest. So I see a really, really high success rate with this one. If it's iPhone to iPhone, it works out really good. If they, if, if they're a green bubble kind of person, or if you're a green bubble person, you can use social media instead, um, messenger, Facebook messenger. If, if you guys are friends on Facebook, which you should be. Uh, and then here's another strategy for getting reviews is take the reviews from other platforms that you've had, go find them copy the review link uh, or copy the review, the text from the review, put it into an email and send it off to your, to your past client who left that review on another platform and say like, Hey, I just wanted to say thanks so much for the review over here on Zillow. I'm trying to build up my presence on Google. Could you do me a huge favor? You can put a little incentive in there and say like, Hey, if you do this for me, I'll send you a five dollar starbucks card or ten dollar starbucks card or whatever you know but don't let google find out that you're incentivizing reviews because that's a big no-no for google if you uh, if you incentivize your reviews and they find out about it you'll get suspended probably pretty quick right uh and then here's the last thing too many reviews at one time will get your will get your account flagged i had somebody in spokane last year she took a review like she posted it on her social media and she was like, Hey guys, I only have three reviews on my Google and I want to try to get to 50 by the end of the week. And so a bunch of people went in and left her a review. And because of that, like she went from three to, you know, 30 in a matter of a day, Google flagged her account and suspended her. And they were like, wait, 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 something's weird going on. What Google thinks is usually happening is you're either buying reviews or you're incentivizing, you're turning it into a contest. And so if you get a flood of reviews coming in all at one time, that's usually a red flag for Google. And when I say a flood, like a bunch, like if you went for a year without having any or maybe longer, and then all of a sudden you get like 10 reviews in like two days, that's usually a red flag for Google. And they will suspend your account. So they have this new thing called the review recency algorithm. And here's how review recency, it's a sustained influx of reviews over time. So instead of big bursts. Uh, so here's my advice is keep a nice steady flow of them coming in. You know, maybe a couple of week is fine, is cool. Uh, if you're, if you don't have any reviews to send out, start asking some of your vendors, some of your partners, some of your referral agents, 
uh, some of your past clients, go into, go into Zillow and see if you can get one this week from Zillow or realtor.com, wherever. Uh, but try to keep a steady influx of reviews coming in because number one, Google likes it. They like that sustained recency of reviews. Uh, family members giving you reviews, uh, if they have the same last name, I'm not a big fan of that. If they've used you for a transaction, abso-freaking-lutely uh, for sure. But if if you've given them advice, they can mention in there that you've given them advice. But sometimes family members, it looks a little it looks a little sketchy if you ask family members for for reviews and there's five people in there with the same last name as you. It looks like you're just bumping your review count. But if they've all done transactions with you, absolutely for sure. Just have them lie. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't say that out loud. Uh, okay missing reviews. Let's talk about missing reviews. I hate missing reviews. This is the Google. It's the bane of my existence. In fact, I think I've dealt with missing reviews almost every single day in the last month. I've had somebody reach out and say, I've got a couple of reviews that are missing. Uh, and it's, it's absolutely perplexing. And Google will always tell you the same thing. They always tell you, oh, well, we, we routinely hide reviews that violate our terms of service or, uh, you know, things like and, it's all BS basically is what it is. But uh, Google's AI is what's hiding these reviews. And number one is super frustrating. I can't tell you how frustrating it is because you spent all this time, energy and effort getting these reviews. Your client says, hey, I left a review and you go there and it's missing. It's, it's uh, It aggravates me. But there's a couple of reasons, usually a couple of reasons. One, uh, if it includes any contact info, I had somebody who uh, they asked their lender partner for uh, a review. And he replied to her review, but put his contact information in there. Hey, thanks so much for the amazing review. And if anybody reading this ever needs any, you know, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then put his contact info and boom, the review got flagged and got disappeared. So don't include any contact info or web links of any kind. Uh, if they're out of the area, that's usually another AI thing where the AI is like, oh, wait a second you're in Washington state, but this review came from somebody in Florida. So sometimes that triggers it right there. Not always, but, but occasionally if it's in the same IP, the same IP address, like you had four people in, 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 in the same household under the same IP, leave a review. That's another red flag. Uh, a new Google account, like if they, if you sent somebody a request for a review, they needed a Google account, they didn't have one, they signed up for a Google account, two minutes later, they left you a review. Google usually triggers that one too. They don't like that. So it usually has to be kind of a seasoned uh, Google account. And then, or they left a review from somebody with the same, in the same business category, more than four or five times. I've actually had this happen to me because uh, I've been helping people out and trading reviews and because they're real estate agents and I've left reviews for 10 different real estate agents. Uh, all of a sudden they're like, Oh, this is the same business category. And they, they're, so my reviews started being hidden because I left too many reviews for too many people in the same business category. Uh, but that's, and it's all based on the AI. Okay. So AI is doing this. There is a way to get them back. And here's what I've started doing. And I've, I've had about a, we'll, we'll say a 75% success rate. I've, I've done this method four times, three times I've had the reviews actually come back on. And the fourth one, I'm still waiting. So it might be a hundred percent. If, if, if it happens, it might be a hundred percent, but Google has a support business support, get help. Okay. It's support.google.com slash business slash get help. Takes you to this form right here. Now you have to be logged in with the Google account that manages your profile first. And it's going to show up in this little drop down right here. And then you're going to tap in, you're going to put in, tell us what we can help you with. You say missing reviews. And it says, it says like, which one of these down here is, are you having a problem with? We sat hit missing reviews and then we go to the next step and just fill out the rest of the contact form. Now it's helpful to have either screenshots of the people who left you missing reviews or even the names of the people who left you a missing review. Okay. That's really, that's going to be really, really helpful going forward. In fact, Google's going to want that. Uh, you're going to, and you're going to need a couple other things. I put all this in my review guide. That I'm going to show you here in a minute at the end. Uh, so the other thing too, if you, to get your reviews to not be missing is use the maps link. Um, I can't stress this enough. Uh, I have a hundred percent success rate with sending out a maps link. 
because here's what it looks like when when you when somebody hits that maps link they go to google maps and for google it looks like somebody actually searched you out they went to google and they searched and then they scroll down and they hit write a review so to google it looks like somebody did a search for you and hit the review link and left your review it didn't it doesn't look like you were pushing the review link out to somebody else okay so that's my number one tip for if to not have your reviews go missing number two tip add a photo and every every person i know who's had a photo added to their review has not had it go missing 100% uh and not only that but it's a good practice because now we're adding user generated content ugc to your google business profile okay so those right there, those automatically, those reviews that have the photos usually float up to the top. So when somebody's looking at reviews uh, and in the consideration phase and they're reading your reviews, those ones with the photos are going to float up to the top. And people actually clicking on the photos and saying like, oh, I want to see a picture of this family with their kids and their dog and, you know, or whatever. So I'm telling you, like photos on reviews, it's a cheat code. It's a total cheat code. Uh, and then here is my Google reviews guide. So I put this guide together. It's kind of a summary of everything that I covered in here. It goes into a little bit more detail. Uh, it walks you through the whole process of the missing reviews, how to keep your reviews from going missing, why they go missing. Uh, and I, I stopped short of, you know, calling Google names, but it doesn't mean that I don't do it in my head. Uh, but I'm telling you like everything that you're going to want to know about Google reviews is going to be in this guide right here. Everything you wanted to know and then some. So if you scan that code, scan that QR code, it'll take you over to uh, to the KFA Club website where you can download the Google review. I'll put this link, if you're watching this uh, on YouTube, I'll put the link uh, in the description as well. And then if there's any questions, I know, Ellen, I think I already answered your question about Google, about family members doing reviews. Anybody else have any questions about reviews? Uh, the, the number one question I always get asked is, do they have to have a Zillow or a, a Google account in order to leave a Google review? Yes, they have to have a Gmail or a Google account. So if your clients have an at Gmail address, it's a slam dunk. They already have a Google account. So super, make, that makes it super easy. If they have like at Yahoo, mm, uh, then they're going to have to have a Gmail account. So no questions. That was it, huh? Okay, cool. Well, I burned through that in 38 minutes. Not bad. All right. And that was with the Q and a, uh, I'm going to send this out, um, send out a reply. If you signed up for this, I'll, uh, I'll send it out in an email and, uh, be over on my YouTube channel shortly. Otherwise we'll see you at the next one. The next one we're talking about is, uh, we're, we're going to talk about photos and videos and logos and cover photos, all that kind of stuff. So it'll probably be a pretty short one next time, maybe 15, 20 minutes. Uh, otherwise we'll see you at the next one. Have a great day, everybody.